I've been on the road here in Nigeria, in Wari, with the Lion of Africa, His Eminence, uh, His Grace, Bishop Idol. They call him Papa. And I'm so excited to be here with you. Today has been an extraordinary day. Uh, it has been a, a, a long day. But before we get started, I normally like to start my interviews off by doing what they call a one-for-one. One. Okay. I'll uh, give you a word and you tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Um, you can't be wrong, it's just what, whatever comes to your mind that will describe it, and give us the basis for our message. Can we do a little bit of that? Let's try. You said let's try. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, the first uh, question or word that I want to give you uh, today is power. Incredible. Jesus. Christ. Father. Mentor. Wife. Husband. Husband. Wife. <laughs> Demons. Jesus Christ. So when you mention demons, why, why does the first thing come to your mind, Jesus Christ? Because he is the answer ah. to every demon. Wow. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Wow. So that name drives demons, sends them far, they go, they run. Church. People. The American church. Speak your heart. <laughs> the American church. Uh, heartless. Heartless. Wow. The African church. Oh. The African American church. Roy. Wow. Islam. Problem. Why do you say problem? It, it, it's, a, it's a whole wide range of, of things. Um, I sit and I watch and listen to the main stream leader, main, main stream media, and I hear what they have to say about this. It's almost like the Western world apologizes for every wrong thing they do. They bomb you, then you make excuses for them. Um, we don't feed them well. We need to uh, give them good housing. We need to be nice. We need to do this and all that stuff. But the, the truth is, and then, and then we, put, we put a lot of nice flowers after they bomb and kill people. Mm. Every time new flowers, flowers are all over the place. But the point is they never seem to go to the root to solve the problem. The problem of terrorism will never be solved until the Western world goes to the root cause. And what is the root cause? Mm. The root cause, and, and I'm going to be very blunt with yes, this, please. And, and I hope I still have people who love me, yes. um, is in Saudi Arabia. Because um, there are two doctrines that all terrorists, anywhere they are, all Islamic extremist terrorists believe in is called Salafi mm. or Wahhabi. Mm. And the schools are all based in Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, ben Laden went to that school. Yes. And they, they take a lot of young men from Africa to that school. And a lot of the terrorists you see everywhere, that's where the doctrines come from. And, 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 and it's all part of the overall Islamic doctrine, mm -hmm. but it's a school on its own mm -hmm. that teaches certain things. It's an extreme thing. It, it, it motivates them to kill, to, to destroy, to, to harm, to do wrong, to, be, to do all this stuff. And, and uh, so I think the Western world must come to a point where they can rise up and challenge and hold Arabia accountable and say, when are you going to shut down this school? What are you going to do to stop this? 
when will you now address these issues and make sure, for example, uh, these people, uh, this, there are many wonderful Muslims, they come to the Western world, then they say they want equal rights. Uh, in, in the British Parliament today, there are at least 44 yeah. Muslims in the British Parliament. Yeah. The question is, is there one Christian in any parliament or in anything in Saudi Arabia? No. You won't find one. No. Can I go to Saudi Arabia wearing a cross? No. no. Can I take a Bible no. into Saudi Arabia? No. Now, why is the Western world not asking these questions? Why is it that they have to be made comfortable in the West, but they will not make people from the West comfortable in the East? There has to be, it cannot be a one-sided thing. So my point is, we're, we're, we're not, not we. You guys are not dealing with the root cause of the problem. You're, you're just on the surface. And as long as you stay on the surface, the problem continues to multiply. The thinking of some people in the West is that just be good to them, be nice, and they will be nice. No, 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 no. Look, the only way Islam will receive you is if you receive Islam. And you receive Islam either by force, by force or by denying yeah. who, 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 who God is. Yeah. There's no, there's no other way. You are an infidel as long as you don't accept Islam. There is nothing there. And don't forget also, there is something in Islam called Takiya in, in, in the Arabic language. It means deception. Mm. And it's allowed in Islam for a Muslim to deceive you. It's allowed as long as he's promoting Islam. Now, these are issues that must be addressed openly and, and sincerely. And, 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 and when those issues are addressed in America, it does what? <laughs> What you find, it, it creates problems. It creates a lot of problems. Now, you know how I know that? I know that because the president of the United States of America are addressing those issues. Yeah, they won't and let it him create, do that. They won't let him do it that. It creates problems. Yes, because the mainline uh, media would, uh, they would, they would, they would shut you down right away. Uh, you know, some of us who have to get a visa to come to your country, we. We sometimes have to yeah. tread very softly, right. you know, because we don't know if it can be anything, you know. But, but it's so wrong. It's so yeah. wrong. But that's why I wanted to ask you the one for one, uh, because I, I didn't want to just run and ask you that question, but I wanted to steer you, uh, to uh, stir you up. You to have. And steer you <laughs> to, get to, to, get to, to get to that point, because ecla, ecumenicalism, where everybody's coming together and everybody's, I remember when the Pope visited the United States of America, yes. and they had all these different religions yes. all standing there and, yes. you know, in holy places where if we were to go to those countries, they would never yes. allow, allow yes. that. that so, yeah. Um, you can't build a church in Saudi Arabia. It's not allowed. It's against the law. It's written there. It's in the law. It's not allowed. You can't. You can't kneel down to pray. You can't. You can't do any of all those things. You just can't do it. You can't even do it in your home. If you go, so they find out. If they find out, you're out. If they keep you out. In fact, you may go to jail. Yes. Or they take the head off. Yeah. I mean, they sent something into my, my my video. I don't know where they got it from. A young lady in I think Saudi Arabia, because she converted to Christianity. They sold her lips together with, with needle and thread mm. and sold one of her eyes one with needle and thread just to punish her for converting to Christianity in the 21st century. And and here now I was I was I saw something that just flashed on my television. Um, uh, in Indonesia, they are protesting against a group of uh, most of their names that are, uh, are, are refugees now getting out of uh, Myanmar or this uh, Burma, they're getting out and going to Bangladesh, mm -hmm. and, and they are protesting 
But then I said to myself, the former governor in the main city of Indonesia, uh, what's, what's the name of the city? It's Jakarta, whatever. The main city, there's a, there's a whole state there, Jakarta. Now, the former governor was a Christian. Now, the fundamentalists got together and got the Muslims to vote him out. out. They stood out, they brought placards and ran all over the place, took him to court and said that he blasphemed against Islam. He was jailed for two years. All right? Now, he tried to appeal. I don't know where he is now with his appeal, but they've kicked him out. Now, nothing about it is in the Western media. Nobody is saying anything. But now the same Western media is carrying the news of them protesting of these Muslims that have been, uh, well, they say they have been sent out of this other country into Indonesia. They call it uh, ethnic cleansing and all that. But it's not ethnic cleansing when it is happening to Christians. Christians. Yes. You see, it, it, it's acceptable. But the, the funny thing is the people defending these things are people who say that they're Christian. Thank you. Sir. Their names are Abraham, Andrew, Matthew, you know, and all that. And then you wonder. James. James. And, and, and here you are defending all kinds of things. And, and they keep bombing you. They keep destroying you. Look at what just happened in, in, in London. Yeah. I, I, look, I just hope Americans will still like love me and like, let me come to your country. Look at what just happened in London. Just see what happened. Now, now, uh, Donald Trump, I don't know him. Yes. I am not an American. You guys voted for him. So he is the president of America. So I have no real comments about him, right? Yes. You know, I have no feelings. But he came out and sympathized with the UK for what just happened. Then he said, this has been done by uh, Islamist fundamentalists. Now, Immediately, the whole world went wild and said, now, how can he be saying that? How does he know that they did this? He's not even sure. He, why would he just come out and say that? And then, in about two, three, four, five hours later, from the, uh, the British government, they came out to say, this is by Islamic uh, fundamentalists. So, now, right. the guy was not wrong when he said what he said. And nobody has come out to apologize to him, for example, for the way they went after him. Uh, like I said, I don't know him. I'm not, I'm not whatever. I, uh, but, but I'm just looking at the facts. Why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we do this? Why must we go this way? Why must we stand with what we know is wrong? Why well, must we always be politically correct? Yeah. Uh, be acceptable by the world? Uh, why can't we stand up for what we know is right? And be willing to die for it. My goodness. Why would we do that? You see, the Muslims don't have to do anything anymore. You go to the UK today, they send me a list of all the major cities in the UK. All the mayors are Muslims. They are all Muslims. Look, if, if, if this is not taking too much of your time, I was sitting in, a, a, in the living room of a leading bishop in London, and we were around a table, and uh, some members of the British Parliament were there. They happened to be Muslims uh, from the Middle East, but now they're in London, and they are in the British Parliament. Now, I was sitting around that table with one or two other Christian leaders, and there were other Muslim leaders from Nigeria who were all sitting there. But I sat quietly listening. And for 30 minutes, what were they talking about? They were saying, the, 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 the UK, the British uh, people must be more open to Islam. They must love Islam better. They must do better to Islam. And, and they, they just went on and on for about 30 minutes. Now, I couldn't bear it anymore. So I, 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 I raised my hand and I said, uh, please, gentlemen, please forgive my ignorance. Uh, I am very ignorant, and uh, I confess that from the beginning. So please forgive me ahead of time. 
I was just listening to your conversation. Um, where are you from? He said, well, originally from Iraq or somewhere. Um, I said, oh, sir, where, where are you from? Uh, somewhere also in the Middle East. Uh, what about you, sir? Uh, somewhere also from the Middle East. I said, and you are all in the British Parliament now? They, they, they said, yes. And I said, and yet you think the British have not done well towards By Islam? You. Wow. I, I, I said, please forgive my ignorance. You know, I don't know much, but <laughs> I'm just wondering how you are saying they've not done well towards you, but you are in the British Parliament. Can I build a church in your own my God. country? My God. And they were looking at me. I said, I said, can I come into your country with a cross? Huh? Can, can, can I carry a Bible? Can I stand and preach freely? Can I do all these things? You can do all this freely in the UK. And yet they are not good enough. In your own country. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand this. So you, could you educate me, you know, please? Like I said, I'm ignorant. I need help. And, and that was the end of the discussion anyway. Yeah, but the, no one wants to talk to a dumb man. Yeah. Because he's too dumb. wise. Yeah. But the dumb man is too wise. <laughs> <laughs> no one to talk to the dumb yeah, man. He's so too wise. That's, you know? where, that's where I find myself. You know? So, 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 I, I hear clearly what you're saying. But there are in time scriptures that clue us into how the end is going to be and how it's coming. How close are we to that? We are very close. We are very close. When, when you look at so many things happening around us today, um, it's either you don't read the Bible, or you don't understand the Bible, or you don't want to understand the Bible, or you're just plain ignorant. Because the signs are all there now. So many things are happening. They start, someone sent me something. They, they're putting the chips in people's yeah. yes. body. Yeah. You know, uh, 666 yeah. and all that. So with and that, the, you and can... The, and the credit card information. Credit card info and all the information. Uh, you can just do your hand like yeah, this. Yeah, you're right. and, and you can buy. At the point with that, you, you don't need a passport. You yes. just do like this and to show on the screen right. and you walk through you walk to, yeah. uh, 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 immigration. Yeah, yeah. Apple's coming out with the eye rec with oh. the face recognition. Yeah, yeah. All, that's all the latest the system. Yeah. Yeah. It's, all, it's all part of it. It's, it's all part of it. You see. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, 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 um, like I said, except you are not studying your Bible or you just want to be ignorant. Yeah. But if, if you really want to know what is happening, the signs are everywhere. Uh, then you look at war. And, and rumors of wars, and you look at uh, the natural disasters. Uh, there was no hard natural, of, most of them are anyway. Yeah, that's, that, there was a part today in your message yeah. when you were preaching, and you stopped and you started preaching on storms and, and winds. winds. Yeah. I want our audience to take a look at that, and then we're going to come back and discuss it. All right. your Bible. Two important words, storm and wind. If you are a good student of the Bible, you should know that the word storm represents the troubles of life. Anybody who 
preaches and tells you once you accept Christ, you will have no trouble. He's a liar. You will have trouble. God never promised us a trouble-free life. He promised us a victory full life. Yes, the trouble may come, but the victory will come. I don't care how many devils come against you. The troubles may come, but the victory will come. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. If you believe in God, yes. The storms of life. Many of you looking at me now, sitting in this audience, some watching by television, some watching by streaming, wherever you are, you have trouble. Job 14 verse 1, the Bible says, any man born of a woman, his days are few and they are full of troubles. Many of you have troubles. You hide your tears. And I've said it here before, I don't blame you. Because if everybody knows why you cry, they will use it against you. So you have troubles. But I promise you as a servant of God, that every trouble that you face in your life, God will raise victory for you. So the storms of life are real. But please wait a minute. The Bible says storm, then it says wind. So what is wind? When you study the Bible, one of the meanings of wind in the Bible is spirit. When you read 2 Samuel chapter 22 verse 11, the Bible says he is seen, talking about God, he is seen on the wings of the wind. So the Spirit of God is described as wind. But the, the Spirit of the devil is also a wind. Because if you read Job chapter 1 verse 19, the, look, I, I'll use my own words. The Bible tells us that a great wind came from the wilderness and struck the four walls of where Job's children were staying and the walls collapsed and all the children died. It was a wind. I come from a culture uh, that still sees a lot of things that you can't explain with science. It, it, it will blow your mind. Right. Right. Um, I, I was telling you a while ago mm -hmm. that I have seen. I don't know if I should say this on you your show. You should program. say it. <laughs> I'm a warfare guy. So you <laughs> I, I, I was I was in a Morris Roll of service yeah. in, in the U.S. Yes. and I was saying to the audience, I asked them. I said, Have, have you seen a pregnant man? A man pregnant? Mm -hmm. And they all looked at me. Like, where is he coming from? I said, look, for me, it's not a story. I have seen, seen it, it seen. with my eyes. And, and the guy confessed witchcraft. Yeah. How his pregnant wife, he will at night, all right, uh, by spiritual means and manipulations, take the baby out of the wife's womb mm -hmm. and put take the baby into himself yeah. and carry this baby and go to the witchcraft cover and and use the child and do all kinds of things there and uh, so the lady the, the wife will always notice that at a certain time she's empty she's empty nothing seems to be there 
But then, just before it's daybreak, she's heavy again. And, and so she, she complained and told her mother, who is a Christian and a warfare Christian. And the mother said, I know what's happening. He said, now, uh, the next time you notice you are empty, get out of the house and come to my house. And uh, let's see what happens. So, a few days later, she discovered she was empty. empty. So she got out of bed, got dressed, and took off and went to her mother's house. Now, not knowing that it was her husband that had taken the baby and had gone to the witchcraft cover. Now, he comes back naked because they have to be. That's the way it is. Yes. Usually when they do this astral projection yes. and whatever they do. So he was naked and pregnant. And now he arrives and the wife was not there. Not there. So he can't he put the baby back. Right. Now, <laughs> the wife, he didn't know where the wife was. So he stood there, stood around, it was six, seven, eight o'clock. Now, and, and, and people began, they were knocking on the door. And, uh, they were calling her the wife's name. Can, can we see you? And, uh, at nine o'clock, people felt something was wrong, so they broke the door. And when they broke the door, they saw a pregnant man. And people started running. And they said, what's happening? And he, he was in tears. And he said, look, the truth is, I am a wizard. And this is what I did. It's witchcraft. And he confessed the whole thing. And they brought him out to the public. That's how I saw him. And right here in the city. They brought him out in public and everybody saw him and with, with the pregnancy. He died anyway because, I mean, yes. a man is not made Major. physically to yeah. carry a baby. So he died anyway. So I told that story. Now, again, coming to the issue of the wind, and it, sometimes I listen, uh, I was just in the U.S. and I was listening to all these different hurricanes that were coming, different ones, having this, that, that and the ones I've heard of in the past. And in, in your message this morning, yeah. in your message this morning, you talked about the Atlantic Ocean. That's where I was going. And how the storms grew on the Atlantic Ocean. We're going to take a look at that, and then we'll come back so you can explain yes. what you were talking about. Yes. There are winds that have been blowing in your family for centuries. Some of you from generations to generation. That is why there are families where women cannot stay in their husband's house. Because there is a wind that blows them out. That is why there are families where men work hard. But they have nothing to show for it. Because there is a wind that blows it away there are all kinds of winds blowing 